Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria. Today we're going to take a look at this pink dress I created based on 15th century styles. I decided I want to make a new Burgundian court gown with some pink brocade I recently got, so that means I had to make a dress that goes underneath it as well. The dress worn underneath this style is a kirtle which is laced up in the front. This is a well-documented generic style from the era. We also sometimes see pinned on sleeves that go with this style, and I'll be making mine out of brocade that actually matches the overdress. We also see a lot of these dresses in the mid 15th century with a waist seam, so that's how I'll be patterning mine as well. The skirt for this style is pretty simple. It's just these flared panels. You can cut as many as you want. I usually do somewhere between four and six. For this particular dress I'm doing six, though I decided to cut some of them on the fold wherever I could just to save fabric. So I think I actually ended up with four panels, though it was like six total, but a couple of them were cut in half and a couple of them were not. This is pretty simple to pattern, it's just like flared out and you honestly don't have to do the curve of the hem until you fit the dress. But because this is a pattern that I've used many times before, I already have the curve worked into it. But if it was the first time I was making it, I would just draft however wide I wanted it to flare and then go ahead and fit the skirt on and cut it off so that it drapes evenly at the end. So this dress is going to lace in the front so that means I need a little bit of an opening in the skirt at the front to accommodate the fact that the lacing is going to go down into the skirt area so I'm sewing all of these panels together from top to bottom except for where two of the panels meet in the front there I'm leaving at least several inches so that I have room to extend the lacing down into there now you'll notice here that I'm using a single layer of linen for most of this dress, though I am lining the bodice. In period, you typically see these dresses made of wool. However, I live in a very warm environment and I wanna be able to wear this dress all year. And for me, linen is absolutely perfect for my environment. They did have linen in period as well, though evidence suggests it was typically more of a lining material. So here you can see the opening that I've left in the front and I will finish that off by folding it over and hemming it as well. And here you can see how some of my panels are on the fold of the fabric. So there on the left side you have two sewn together and then on the right side you have one that is the full width of the fabric basically and you can feel free to combine those however it works out for your pattern. There's really no rule if you're trying to go for a historical dress. So next I'm working on the bodice. This is actually the bodice portion of my medieval code hardy pattern and also a sleeve from that pattern. So if you'd like more information on drafting that, I will link to the PDF that I have. It's essentially four panels, two front and two back that are fitted to the body and they go down to about the waist. So to sew these together, I'm sewing the back seam and the shoulder seams, and I'm doing this in a layer of outer and also a lining layer, and this is lined in the same fabric as the exterior as well. So next I'm sewing the side seams there, so you can see it's basically like a vest at this point. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the outer fabric to the lining. To do this, I'm placing the lining and the outer layers right sides together, and I'm pinning them together and then sewing that all the way around the opening. So from the front opening up around the neck opening and down the other side of the front.
you can really see here how I have a bit of a curve in the front seam that helps a lot with fitting because of my bust size compared to my under bust size. This is now turned right side out, corners clipped and ironed. Next I sewed the underarm seams of the sleeves and then the sleeves are gonna get attached into the armholes. So basically I'm just matching up that shoulder seam with the top of the sleeve and the underarm seam with the bottom of the sleeve. And then I'm setting those in right sides together and I am serging all the seams of this dress. fitting if you are making a new pattern or working with a new fabric or an old pattern you haven't used in a while definitely want to do some fittings I've used this pattern recently and I can tell that it's fitting all right so good to go next I am sewing the skirt onto the bodice to do this I'm creating a bunch of pleats so basically just making the skirt pieces fit onto the bodice because I kind of cut however many skirt panels I feel like cutting at the time, I cut more this time, like on the higher side of skirt panels. So that means I have a little bit higher number of pleats. Whereas some that I make these dresses, I have fewer pleats with fewer skirt panels. So it's totally up to you. You can do it, you know, as big as you want or with as much or as little fabric as you want. And once again, doing a fitting here, and it looks like it is fitting pretty well. As you can see, I have pleats there in the center front, and then the rest of them are toward the back, starting sort of at the side. Next, it's time to hem the dress. I am hemming this by machine. So I'm doing this by simply folding over the fabric twice. I'm hemming the sleeves and the bottom hem of the dress. And I don't need to hem the neckline because I've done a sort of what's called a bag lining, where remember, we put the lining attached to the outer fabric and then turned it to the inside. So that one's already nice and finished. Now, depending what type of lacing and style you want to go for, you can create eyelets. I do have a video on how to create hand bound eyelets. For this one, I'm using little metal lacing rings, and I think those look really nice. And we see those in some of the paintings as well. I'm using a cord that I created by finger loop braiding, and I'll also link you to a tutorial on how to do that as well. And finally, I decided to add a little personal touch of of fantasy to this dress. I found this gold embroidery trim actually at my local Joann's. Sometimes I find good stuff there and I hand stitched that all on. Next I am cutting my sleeves out of the same fabric I'll be using for the outer court gown which will be in the next video by the way so make sure you come back for that. You may notice this fabric has already been cut. That's because I actually cut out the court gown first before I cut out the sleeves because I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric and then the sleeves were basically like the little scrap pieces that were left over. But we're going out of order here because we're going sort of in the order of getting dressed. So, you know, the kirtle has to go first. This is actually just my long sleeve pattern, but I'm not cutting it all the way up to the top. So I'm just cutting it off like straight across the edge so that I have 
most of the sleeve, but not the upper shoulder portion. I will not be lining these sleeves because this is a warmer, more synthetic based fabric and I don't really want a lining, but you can line yours if you like. The sleeves are actually super duper easy. You just sew that underarm seam there and then you just hem the sleeves top and bottom and voila, you have a pair of extra pin on sleeves for this type of dress. And finally, I already have a belt that goes with this style. I purchased the buckle or the hook, I guess it's not really a buckle, but I purchased the hook for this belt from Raymond's Quiet Press, another small business that I love to promote because they have amazing stuff. And also, though I have cast things in the past, I'm more a fan of sewing than casting. So I like to use the very efficient process of letting someone else do that and paying them for their service. Altogether, the dress is very comfortable. I'm really happy with it. I'm kind of making my wardrobe a little bit more pink lately. And I think that that's pretty cool. You know, it's just kind of an evolution of my personality. I used to have a lot more reds before, and now I'm going a little bit brighter and lighter. This dress is typically worn over another underdress, which would be a plain white linen shift. Though if you want to skip that layer, you technically can, right? Because no one's going to notice. But if you're wondering what all they wore back in the day, you would have that extra white shift underneath. And on my head, I'm wearing this veil that I really love with frilled edges, which we see in a lot of the 15th century paintings. So you may notice this is in fact a complete look all on its own. And in the mid 15th century, this was worn as a complete outfit all on its own. However, this is also a base garment, which can be a supportive garment worn underneath the court gown, which you'll find in the Burgundian region. So in the whole project, which is, you know, in two video installments here, I'm basically making myself two new outfits in one, which is pretty cool. And again, you can pattern the bodice of this dress using my medieval kirtle or coat hardy drafting instructions. The difference here is that I've cut it off at the waist and then the skirt is those separate flared panels. And I will link that resource in the description. If you feel inspired to make something, I'd love to see what you create. Find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating amazing content. I hope you all have an absolutely magical day. And don't forget to come back and watch the making of the dress that's going to go on over top of this one.